So today is the uh, second week about the church ministry. Today's main focus is the uh, what is the requirements. You know, every job search that you do, and uh, they will show you. You know, these are the requirements for our job. You know, for this company, we are looking for this sort of person. Well, same thing in the kingdom of God and uh, church ministry, and uh, God uh, expects certain thing, uh, certain things, for people to have. You know, uh, I would say this is not. You know, this is the minimum. Uh, requirements. So let's look at uh, uh, some of the things. The first thing is definitely the faithfulness. Can you say that word? Faithfulness. What is that word? Faithfulness. It's something, uh, somebody faithful, you know, trustworthy, reliable. Let's say when you open up a business and uh, uh, you want your business to do well and uh, you have hired people, and, uh, and what do you want, you know, out of all those people that you want to keep, uh, keep, it, keep them in your business, you will look for one thing that is for sure, is that the who is reliable, who never uh, a change and never uh, uh, makes funny excuses and uh, never cheat, never steal. And here's the, um, uh, some of the scripture that we can look at it and think about it. 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 12. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord and who has enabled me because he counseled me, uh, he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. And he says, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has enabled me. And there's a very important clue that we can get out of here is that for anyone who wants to do any work, anything for the Lord, you got to understand, you're not doing that work or ministry out of your own fleshly uh, power and energies or your own uh, strength. Whatever we do, we got to do it out of the um, enabling power of Jesus Christ. Are you with me? It is important that for us to know that there is a power and the strength that Jesus Christ can give you and he will empower you, okay? But that empowerment isn't enough for you to carry out any of the work of God, okay? Why is that? Let's say somebody who's very capable, you know, charismatic and... um, a uh, very uh, 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 great capacity to carry out the things. But if his character is not so faithful, you know that uh, times that the people come into your life with all this, uh, uh, the gifts, things they can do, but they don't stick around and just disappears quickly and their uh, uh, nature don't really have sense of loyalty and so on. You know, it, it, it can be a challenging a thing. And here is the, um, the word, uh, uh, Apostle Paul, he says, because he, meaning Christ, counted uh, me faithful. So the word counted here is more of a consider, something that's really not. But then he regarded me as faithful. I think it's a bit of a modest uh, expression of Apostle Paul that um, knowing his own background, where he had been, and so on, but despite of that, God and Jesus Christ consider him faithful. And as if faithfulness is the, one of the main criteria for God to give any sort of ministry to anybody which I tend to agree. If somebody, so-called servant of God, do not have this uh, reliable nature of their lives, characteristics that trustworthy, you know, then you're not going to give important work to a person who is sort of uh, uh, not so trustworthy. So you may have certain job for uh, some of the people who just, uh, they may do, they may not, 
But there's some very, very important, the core of your business, key uh, work, you're not going to give it to anybody. You will give it to the person that you can totally trust. With that guy, with that girl, I know that he will deliver that work. He will deliver that money. And he will make sure that job will be done in due time. And same thing in the kingdom of God. You know, some people had this idea that in the kingdom of God, you know, we give to God for the whatever left over in our lives. Whatever things that are excess, and I give it to the Lord. Whatever the, you know, the things that I use for myself and the whatever left over, I give it to the Lord. That's the wrong idea. You know, He knows our heart, and He deserves and He wants the very best of everything in our lives. Don't take me wrong. Seek His kingdom first. Before you seek your own interests and so on. Because the one who is the king of uh, the kingdom of God, the Jesus Christ, and he will provide everything that you may need. Amen? If you seek his kingdom business as your number one priority. And if you haven't given it a try, and I strongly suggest you that you try, set a time, like, like, like one year, like a commitment, that I'm going to give my very best and priority to the Lord and see what God uh, will do to look after my own life and so on. Trust in Him. But anyway, Paul says, yeah, I don't think I was like that old faithful person, but he considered me faithful, uh, putting me into the ministry. Ministry of what? Ministry of proclaiming the gospel as an apostle, especially to the Gentiles. And verse 13, it says, Although I was formerly a blasphemer <clears throat> and a persecutor and, and an insolent man, was he sort of a, using a hyperbole, saying that he was all that? I don't think he was a high, uh, it was a hyperbole. He was just speaking uh, the, uh, the, the true statement. He used to uh, think that Jesus was a, a, a complete heresy. You know, that whole teaching of Jesus was so wrong, and he believed so deeply in his heart, and he was going after house to house. And uh, when he uh, discovered any other Christians, and he would drag them out and putting that person into jail. And, um, and when uh, uh, Stephen was uh, murdered and uh, he counted to kill him, you know, he raised his hand. Yeah, he deserved to die. So he has this part, that killing of the Christians. And on his ways to Damascus, what was his business? Just uh, going to the city of Damascus. He went there to catch more Christians and put them in jail and... Uh, and uh, if it is possible, you know, getting rid of them. Wow, that's, a, that's a quite a, a bit of a thing for uh, his uh, past life before he knew the Lord. Despite of all those dark past, Jesus Christ enabled the, such an enemy of the church. And uh, Jesus Christ forgive all his violence and the wrong and so on okay and even on top of that jesus christ consider him you know what you are faithful you have been faithful in a wrong direction but now you know better what is the uh, uh, proper plan and uh, a purpose of god i want to give you a chance to prove yourself a faithful and uh, he counted him a faithful and gave him this ministry. But I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly uh, in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord uh, was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which are in Christ Jesus. There are three things definitely uh, he can see in his life. Grace of our Lord Jesus. The grace is the gift 
that we do not deserve, receiving unmerited gift, favor from God. And we certainly did receive the unmerited righteousness of Jesus Christ is upon us for those who believe. And uh, especially Apostle Paul, who used to uh, capture and imprisonment of the uh, all the believers and even voted to kill those Christians and so on, and he obtained the grace and also faith and also the love and so on in Christ Jesus. And um, I want to ask you, if there's anyone who wants to do anything for the Lord, whether it's a worship team, whether it's a usher, or even just simply cleaning the church and, and things, and whatever you do, why would you do anything for anybody? You know, our motive should be that because I know how much I have received the free gift of uh, a grace of God and how much God has loved us, and out of that response, out of that grateful heart, you know, we should, we should serve, okay? And verse 15 and this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save who? Sinners. Even sinners like Apostle Paul. And even the sinners like me, Pastor Jason. You have no idea what kind of sinner I was. And perhaps I'm still in some areas you know, falling short if I bring the all the perfect righteousness of God upon my life. But I do not live under the law anymore. I do live under the grace of Jesus Christ. You know, I don't serve God in order to be saved because I am saved by the grace of God. And my heart is so uh, willing to do anything for the Lord, one who gave me this grace and one who forgave me. Okay? Do you have this testimony in your heart? This is the, one of the main motivations of Apostle Paul. he gone through so much of persecutions and difficulties and so on, but he never forgotten how, where he started. He used to be a persecutor of the church and Christians. So when others persecute him, and he will have an understanding. You know, you, I'm looking at myself. I used to be like that guy, throwing the rock at me you know, cursing at me, and you doing this, and you doing that to me, but you know what? I was just like you. Only difference is that that I have received the grace of God, and you have not discovered that uh, grace of God, and I am more eager to give this grace of God, make you understand and receive, because I've been there once. Are you with me? So there are times that when whatever ministry you do, whatever things that you do, there are times that uh, you feel like, oh, I deserve better. You know, how come they don't communicate? How come, you know, they don't turn up for the time they're supposed to? And all sorts of things. But let us remember what are the core value of any other church ministry is that the Jesus Christ, the perfect, only Son of God, came to this world that is fallen and you know, just a, a, a full of chaos. He came to save sinners. I happen to be the one of that sinners who were saved. Amen? Of whom I am the chief of the sinners. That's what Apostle Paul says. If, you know, the worst of the uh, worst is Apostle Paul. And where can we put ourselves? You know, great mighty uh, apostles. And that's how he he sees it. And he has personal, powerful testimony of gospel. Okay? I don't care what area of church life and church ministry you serve and do things, and I hope you have the clear and right reason, right motivation you have. You do anything for the Lord because of you know that I have received this amazing grace from the Lord. And it is God's expectation. I have been faithful to you. I have given all these things. And I'm looking for somebody who is faithful. Okay? Will you be that person faithful for the Lord? And God will 
God will use those who are considered faithful. What is the praise of a great king, you know, according to the um, uh, parable of talents? Well done, my good and faithful servant. You have been faithful to little things, and now, you know, join the Father's joy, and I'm going to entrust you with the more responsibility because you've been faithful to little things. Whatever you do on this earth, it is considered a little thing. But let us really use our opportunity to serve the Lord. Start small, start simple, but find a way. How do I serve in this life circumstance right now? How can I serve God? Okay, if you decide to serve anything, do it with faithfulness. Amen? Rain or shine, a little bit of aches here or there, at least try. Okay? Because God will see your heart. And it is the definite expectation of our Lord. Because the first Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 2, Moreover, it is required in stores that one be found faithful. Hey, it is the master's uh, expectation. You know, when God called me to be a pastor, when God called me to be a, a, a missionary of you know, a, a certain kind, and uh, I know one thing, that God wanted me to be faithful. I may not be smartest, I may not be this, I may not be that, but one thing I can be is that I can be faithful to what God expects us. Okay? So, same thing with the... Um, this is an old training ground. Whatever the area of your serving in the church ministry, hey, let us be faithful because that is the uh, expectation. Well, another uh, thing, and I believe it is very important, is that the accountability. Okay? Can you say the word accountability? Accountability, you know, the account, the word, it's a financial word. Okay? Uh, it's very clear. Uh, that when you make an initial investment of a certain amount, let's say you give $10,000 to someone and you expect a certain amount of profit, you know, and then one year has gone by to somebody, you know, you gave $10,000 and you ask, so how's that $10,000 that I, you know, invested, how's it, how's it going? And the person says, ah, oh, why you need to know? You know, just trust me. Why do you need to know? Okay, give us some figures. No, it's, it's around, I don't know, kind of 10-ish or give or less, 5%. You know, at times different, never clear. How, how do you feel about your investment? Okay, this, this is trouble. Okay, why you don't give actual account what's actually going on? So, it's uh, any sense that uh, when you are accountable to someone or to something, that means that there's a measurement going on and there's a sense of evaluation. And same thing, that whatever the ministry that you have received from the Lord, is that, that there's some sense of you know, assessment, how are things going with initial what God has given you. Are you accountable to somebody? And that's very important. And there was a time that uh, uh, a long time ago in, a, in our church, such a long time ago, and uh, before I was a senior pastor, there's uh, one of the home group, and they got it into uh, some sort of a situation, situation that is very, very sickening, and a situation that was so wrong, and yet the small group leader didn't want to report it to the uh, a pastor and senior pastor and so on. And they just single-handedly, so, oh, maybe I can handle it, but certainly that is beyond his wisdom and abilities and so on. And later on, so much disaster came along. By the time that the top leadership realized what was actually going on in that, and that was already too late. Everything was falling apart. 
Okay, I'm not going to go into the detail, but there's a lesson is that uh, when there is no report, because there are times that, that some of the ministry, some of the people, what they are doing is that, uh, you know what, I can do whatever I want. I think, you know, I can handle this. You know, I don't have to be, a, you know, accountable to this so-called leader and above that leader and, and so on. That's careful. y o u got to be careful what sort of spirit is driving you because uh, uh, that is very uh, dangerous. So when there's no report to the elders or the pastors, what happened? There's no covering of that issue. So when you face certain situation that's like shocking, difficult, you don't know how to uh, give wise answer, how to fix, and so on, don't just keep it to yourself. Bring it to the church. Bring it to the church leaders. You know, you don't have to make it a public announcement, but talk to the pastor. That's what they are supposed to be doing, and elders, okay? And, um, and here's... Uh, some of the scriptures, uh, Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 17, it says, Obey those who rule over you and be submissive. Oh, they, these, are, these are loaded words these days. You know, listen and obey, you know, submissive. And uh, people hate those words. Why? Because uh, we don't want to be accountable to anything. We want all the freedom in the world. I want to do whatever I want, but don't. Check me, don't measure, don't evaluate, because I'm a free agent, I'm a, a, a free as a bird, I will do whenever I feel like, you know, I will not do because I don't feel like, and I will do this way and that way, don't tell me what to do, don't, you're not going to go too far, whether in the church or outside of the church, that sort of spirit, that sort of mindset will not be able to achieve anything, okay? And uh, in the church, God wants to teach us. God wants to disciple us to submit to one another, okay? And for they, uh, this is the spiritual leaders, and they watch out for your souls. As those who must give account, and let them And do so with joy and not with grief, for that would be unprofitable for you. So those elders and the leaders and the pastors, you know, uh, why don't you obey? Why don't you be submissive to those who are making decisions, who are giving counsels and, and so on? Because those people who must give account, what does that mean, give account? Is that... Um, Uh, I give account to the Lord. That's a fancy way of saying that I talk to God, pray, you know. There are times that uh, Jenny and I, you know, between, the, between us and say, did you see so-and-so? Oh, why? Isn't it great, very diligent, you know, giving so much and things and how wonderful he is and how blessing he has been to our church and things. It just... Just a few changes and turn it into uh, a prayer. Praising God for so and so. I give report to God, whether you know it or not. I give report to God for when you are struggling, when you are in a place of strong rebellion, when you are in the place of spiritual blindness. Have concern in my heart and pray to the Lord. I give account. I give account to the uh, all sort of organization outside. You know, many of you, you know, when you uh, applying for a new job and so on, I often, I'm, I'm one of the uh, just the most used person as a referee. And I said, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give a you know, favorable report, but not to the point of lying. Okay? So I hope you're reading what I'm saying. Okay? Because as a minister of gospel, I cannot lie, okay? <laughs> so, yeah, I, I give, I, I try to look for all this positive side and all these things. And is there any concern, any areas, things? And uh, I may sugarcoat, but no, really, there are certain areas that I express. I think it's better to be, you know, uh, 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 more honest. 
okay? And yeah, we give account to one another and to the Lord. And um, when you are working for any department, anything, the leaders will give account to me. And don't get offended by it, okay? That's the nature of life. That's the nature of God. God give you certain talent, certain responsibility, and he's, He expects, you know, and your performance. Do you turn up on time? And do you do what you were supposed to be doing? And all those things. And you may think that, the, oh, where's the grace of God? Yeah, there's a plenty of grace of God, but it is the teachable moment that we uh, 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 become accountable to the um, rules and um, the, the agreements that we have in all sorts of area of ministry. Okay? And the, one of the reasons that uh, we are having a difficulty of being accountable, your life is being accountable to somebody else, not to mention to God, because at the end, your life will be accounted when our life's finished, how much talent did you make out of profit? This is how much gave you when you came into this world. These talents and these things. So what have you done with that? Well, that's going to happen. Whether you like it or not, the word accountability, you will be accountable when your life is over. And he will measure and he will evaluate. Either he will say, you good and faithful servant. You've been faithful. To those things. Why don't you join the Father's joy? Or, you wicked and lazy servant, you didn't do a thing with what I have given you in this life. Are you with me? Well, even if you feel like I'm not accountable to you, I'm a, just a free, free bird, I will do whatever I want. Life doesn't work that way. Okay? And that's not the way of church ministry works. We learn to submit to one another. Okay? And um, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5, And likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. Okay? Here's a, here's a big word, humility. You know, yes, we learn we need to submit to the elders and the pastors and spiritually mature and uh, in all sorts of ways. But also, second sentence, it says, yes, all of you, including the older ones and elders and everyone, if the younger ones bring up what the great suggestions and ideas, it, there's no shame to change the policy, change things to the young um, uh, a, 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 a better idea, and so on. There's no shame and no uh, 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 problem of submitting to one another. You know, in general, the Bible says, you know, uh, wives, submit to your husband. You know, these days people will have such a difficulty to chewing on that word. But you know that word, just before one sentence before that, you know what it says? Submit one another. In family. But if your wife's got a better idea, more godly idea, more righteous idea, there's nothing wrong with the husband to submit to wife's idea. But what happened? When the husband and wife, they don't see eye to eye, clashing. You know, they had 24 hours of, you know, of argument and, you know, uh, long discussion and still no solution. What do you do? Submit to your husband. Give him a chance. Bite your tongue. See whether he will fly or fall down. Hey, you've done your part. Okay? There are times that the, your leader seems like making a wrong choice and you feel like, I know better, you know, and so on. You suggest, you give idea as humbly possible and then if it is not taken, what do you do? Don't be bitter. Give it to the, um, uh, give it to the Lord and see what happens. Clothe yourself with humility. 
For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Amen? And uh, the true promotion, it comes from God. Okay? Uh, remember King David? Even though he did everything right, you know, under the evil leadership of King Saul, and he was uh, persecuted, and uh, uh, King Saul threw spears several times to him. But he did not fight back, and he uh, uh, waited under the mighty hand of God until the, the perfect time comes that Lord uh, exalted him. Okay? So, accountability. Think about that. Okay? And uh, one last thing is that the teachability. Okay? Once again, there are uh, times that uh, when you see someone, you try to train and, uh, and teach something. Some people, they just don't get it. Not because they're a lack of uh, uh, intelligence and so on, but because of their unwilling heart to learn things. And that's very difficult. Book of Proverbs teach many things about these sort of things. In Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 1, and it says, Whoever loves instruction loves knowledge, but he who hates correction is stupid. Okay, yes, that's the word, stupid. And um, when I was a young husband, I'm a middle-aged husband, you know, there are times that I was you know, young once, and uh, uh, we bought, you know, in New Zealand, you buy some of the furnitures, you know, needs, needs uh, assembling. So, have you heard this expression, true men don't read instruction? I used to think that I'm true men, so that, uh, you know, it was just really how hard it can be, simple uh, bookshelf. So, rip it up, and uh, so I said, leave it to me. And I put things, you know, without reading at it, because it's, you know, nonsense, it's simple, you know, just put some screws and together, it's all good and put it up there. And then there's always a good, you know, it's a good sign that when you have uh, too many, you know, leftover screws and some of the balls, it's like, where is that from? And uh, some things don't look right. Then what happened? Jenny comes along and she'll say, read the instruction. I don't even know where the instruction, I just rip it apart and where, and uh, she came along and, uh, yep, there's, oh, this doesn't, it, 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 it shouldn't go this way, and actually meant go this way and that way. Then I've learned that uh, each furniture is different. <laughs> each things are different. And, uh, but then um, whoever loves the instruction, any, whatever the works, whatever the ministry you join, you pay attention. What is expected? You know, how, what would be the right way of going about? And then... Um, uh, if he who hates correction, guilty of charge, any, any real man don't like to receive any correction, <laughs> you know, is stupid. <laughs> listen to the wisdom, listen to the instruction, okay? Same thing in the spiritual walk, in anything in life. And uh, here's chapter 13, a book of Proverbs, and verse 18 is that the poverty and shame will come to him who disdains correction, but he who uh, regards a rebuke will be honored. Okay. I had a neighbor, you know, a long time ago, and he's, a, he's from Taiwan, and he's a, uh, some sort of PhD, very smart, you know, a, a, a smart a person, and he was much younger than me. And one time, my father, when he was visiting in New Zealand, one time, you know, we went to our uh, a favorite fishing spot, you know, Spot X. I'm not going to tell you where that is. You know, you find your own, you know, a spot. But I, I saw my next door neighbor, young man. It's like, uh, and he said, oh, good to see you, Pastor. So what are you doing now? Because we try already two hours prior his arrival and say, yeah. How many? Oh, I caught one or two with my dad. You know, today's slow day. 
uh, I don't think so. And he's gone out. And uh, he's catching three in a row straight. It's like, oh, what happened? And he said, oh, I think I see that your way of rigging, you're not going to catch much. So this is the right way. It's like, like that's going to happen. You know, I've been a fisherman longer than you do. And, uh, and then, oh, he caught not three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and I'm still at number three and, and, and hoping. It's just uh, ten minutes apart. I mean, ten meters apart. It's like, okay, we, you know, my dad and I, we looked at each other. What don't we learn from the younger guy? And what's his secret? And show me all these things, how to do it. Guess what? Ever since that day and till now, I catch double amount than any other guy's on the, uh, on the uh, shore. And the uh, same thing happens and somebody you know, comes along, how come you catch way more than we do? Oh, I'm going to teach you if you want to learn and how to do things. Ah, no, nah, that doesn't look fancy. Maybe the dumb luck or something. Well, I've been there once. Okay, good on you. Okay, we'll just carry on. More fish for me. And um, without the humility, you may really miss the great uh, 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 things. If we are too proud, we may not receive correction. The reason may, oh, what does she know? You know, she's a different gender. What does he know? He's younger. What does he, you know, all these things. Hey, why don't we humble ourselves and really learn uh, things properly? And here's one line scripture. is that train up a child and the way he should go. When he is old, he will not depart from it. In other words, whatever you learn properly in the first place, and you train well, and you will have it for your lifetime. Amen? And, uh, and many years ago, first time, you know, just a uh, 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 Jenna and I, we uh, saw the, our Glenfield house, and uh, there's a outside. The deck was really getting, you know, rotted. So I decided to clean the uh, whole thing and um, uh, replace the top board. But then we had an idea, oh, it would be great if we just make the deck much bigger. And then we get too carried away and the entire back, you know, uh, backyard to be an uh, old deck. So it's like 12 meter long and, you know, uh, this massive deck. But then uh, I asked some of the builder, you know, Pastor Market, he was a wonderful builder, and I asked him, would you help me, and so on. But I said, one condition. You know what that condition was? He said, that I'm not going to do a thing for you. I'll only give you the instruction, but you, you do the hard work. So I dug up for the post, and I thought, this is deep, deep enough. And then he says, no, dig deeper. Is that enough? No, dig deeper. And everything he was teaching me how to do it. You know, what's the proper depth and what is the different uh, 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 proper distance from post. You know, this, uh, what is the uh, joist and this, you know, bearer and uh, all these things. Guess what? After I've done that, according to that instruction, I know how to build the deck. Okay? So I've done few, including that ones and so on, that once you learn properly with humility according to the code, according to the rule. Second time, so much easier. In fact, lifetime you can enjoy. Just like fishing, just like building, humble yourself. Learn from the ones who uh, gone before. And train up a child in a way he should go. And he will never depart from it. Amen? Three things. It is expected, same in our church, that uh, faithfulness, accountability, and teachability, then church ministry and church life will be great. Amen? Why don't we just uh, 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 pray to the Lord? It is a great thing that anybody has this desire to serve the Lord and to serve the people and to serve the church. But if you have this lacking any of those areas, and that's going to cause not only to you trouble, but the, it's going to cause trouble to the church and others. There are so many people who have great intention, but not every great intention uh, bears great fruit without this faithfulness, accountability, 
and also the teachability. We're not going to grow mature. We're not going to grow strong. So I'm going to just ask you that anybody who wants to just uh, see that not just in the church ministry, but also in your life in general, your workplace, in your school, whatever you do, you, you realize that the, some of the area is so short. You know, maybe I'm not the most reliable person when it comes to work or study and whatever. Perhaps I'm not the most accountable person. I hate correction. You know, any of you that are like that, you know what? You're going to suffer. You're going to suffer a long time unless you humble yourself, make yourself available and accountable and teachable. So I'm going to give you a chance to repent. I'm going to give you a chance that you will receive the grace of God in this area of more reliable, more accountable, more teachable spirit. Okay? So just, I'm not going to drag it long. Just stand up in your place and I'm going to pray that God's going to give you the humble heart, working it together and uh, submitting yourselves to the uh, altars, authorities and the people around you. Okay? And without that, we cannot accomplish anything in the ministry of the kingdom of God or in your own work, in your own life. Just stand up in your place for those who want these sort of characters to be shaped in your life. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for all of us who see ourselves in the eyes of God and some of the areas that we see that we are lacking. We own up in our humility, that faithfulness, accountability, and teachability, Lord. Give us the heart of Jesus, Lord. Without doing things on our own, following the will of the Father all the way to the cross where he died. He didn't do his own thing, but he obeyed all the will of the Father. And we want to learn from you, Lord. Teach us the humility. And follow, help us to follow the footstep of our Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.